Here's a revised version of the piston. This is the first rendition. There's a couple changes that you can see right away. First off is the texture. On the new version, there's actual indentations of the pattern. Although the first version was contained in just one block instead of two, it's limited on how far it can go. Only going, I'd say around half a block. The new version though is able to go a full block. Also, the new version supports the modular system, as you can see here. We're just using the button. This blue texture is just construction paper that's been glued on. Right here you have the pin system, so power can be applied here and a signal through the middle pins. Likewise, you can add pins here and here and just change the orientation however you want. This new model allows two to be linked up in order for them both to be driven by one servo. Cracking it open, you can see there's a linkage arm that allows it to be connected to this piston here. There is also a separate linking system here. This model here has overhangs that allows it to snap into both these models and keep them together. In order to power the servo itself, it's using a AT Tiny 85. You can either have the module inside the piston, or you can also have it within one of these blocks outside and link it. The way the module works is that when power is supplied here, it will power both the servo and the AT Tiny through this header right here. Once the AT Tiny is powered, and checks this middle pin here. So if both those pins are connected through this button, it goes through a current limiting resistor here down to ground. Just like before, the pin is initialized as a pull up resistor. So when current is able to run through that pin, it's able to detect it and send a signal straight to the servo and extend. Before putting on the servo arm, make sure that you power the circuit up first in order for the servo to go to the unextended position. Here I'm gonna angle the first servo arm and then put on the second servo arm. Once on, you can screw everything down and put the rod straight through. Now connect the battery pack and test out the circuit. I'm using the software servo library in order to control the AT Tiny 85. The code causes jittering inside the servo, so you can just hear it jumping around. Even after optimizing the code, there's still some jittering that you can hear, but the jittering does not affect the piston itself. So if I extend, it'll hold it there. You can hear it jittering, but it won't affect any jittering here in the shaft itself. Unlike this version, the servo arm has been optimized, and so it limits how far it can extend. Just like the old version, it also includes a spot so the servo can be screwed down. The 3D model is also updated so that the battery pack can fit within this spot here. When printing, I recommend you print these rods lengthwise, so just laying flat, since it'll give it more rigidity and they just pop straight into the holes. When printing, you might be able to get away without supports. Here's an example of using supports. It uses more filament but doesn't provide more support. You can see here it broke off. In order to connect the second piston, you put on the adapter here, making sure that these reinforcing tabs are on top and just align it. In order to make sure that the hole in the top piston shaft is connected, just move the top a little bit. If the bottom wiggles, then you know that it's aligned properly. Finally, you can now test it and see if both of them are connected good. The main trade-off is that you have to include this extra block here in order to hide the shaft. The only way to keep it contained in one block form is to use the bedrock edition, which has the embedded shaft here. When considering the speed, it depends on the power that you supply it or voltage. So if I take off this battery pack and instead hook it up to a power supply, I'm gonna be powering it with 3.2 volts. You can see the speed. Now I'm gonna go up to what the battery pack supplies, which is around 3.6, a little bit faster. And now 
the most, which is 5 volts. You can see a large improvement in how fast it can go. It also improved the torque of the servos. If I put my hand in front, that's how much force it has. And now if I crank it up to five volts, it'll fight more. If you do use the battery pack, keep in mind that rechargeable AAAs are 1.2 volts each. Right here I have three connected in series, which makes a total of 3.6. If you're using standard alkaline, those are 1.5 volts. So if you have three, that'd be a total of 4.5 volts. As for the construction paper, I just used glue stick. I caked on a lot of glue onto the body itself and the paper. Then I just stuck on the paper. Alternatively, you can print a design on the paper, like stone bricks, or if you're able to, you can print stickers, but it gives a nicer, cleaner look. When putting the holes, I used a separate paper that previously already had the holes and I just poked it straight through. And then finally, there's also this top plate if you just wanted one piston that you can also use, allowing you to have the single piston. There's also this file named half top piston that works with these other tops. You first put in the half and then you can put in one of the other ones so you can mix and match with whatever top you want to put on. The top and bottom will also have these holes here to put pins in. So when putting this half top on, it can meet with the bottom holes on these blocks. If you weren't using a button here and wanted to power it through a modular redstone block, you'd have to change the code. And so when changing the code, instead of having the pin be a pull-up resistor, you'd instead call it an input and you can use digital read in order to determine whether power is being sent to it or not. Also, if you have the ATtiny circuit outside, then you can have the servo just attached using power here and have the data line for the servo in either one of these holes connected straight into the ATtiny circuit. A problem I came across was right here, there's a gap. So this top doesn't meet here. And if I flip it over, it's able to meet on every side. It could have been while taking it off, it shifted the shaft a bit. It could also be that it warped slightly when it was cooling. So I'm not really too sure on what's causing this. Again, just flipping it over allows it to meet on all sides. So it's pretty strange. But that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please let me know. And thank you for watching.